Brother Raymond, who do you offer to Well, we want to thank you for this and other day of life that you've granted us this Lord's Day. You allowed us to come to your house here today, Lord. We're thankful, Lord, that you love us and we're part of our sin. We gave you life on the cross, Lord. Our sins are covered by the blood of Christ. Now, <clears throat> the blood, there's no remission of sin. We want to continue to pray for those that's out of the way. Loved ones, all that don't know you today, and have been born of sin, are you drawn to your spirit, or we know they can't be drawn unless you draw. It's not your will to any of the for all the kinds of repentance. We're so thankful, Lord, that you made a way for us. As we were assembled here this morning, we pray we came to worship you in spirit and in truth. We need your help here today to do that, Lord, that your name might be lifted up above all names. We might draw them in unto you. I receive the honor and the glory. Those prayer requests have already been turned in in Sunday school. There are so many, Lord, people who afflicted with the body that you touch them today. Thank you for your great position today. You look down upon them and you might touch them with that healing spirit today. You pray for Brother Brad as he breaks the bread of life here and he preaches your precious word and as it's in place and it changes not. We're so thankful today we can cast all of our care upon you care for us. <clears throat> we invite you in our service today, Lord, that everything is pleasing to you. We can go away and say it's been good to be in the house of the Lord today. We pray and ask these things and give thanks in the precious name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Thank you, please. 
Now, this does not mean that you're a know-it-all and you know everything. Now, we might have a couple of them here. No. Uh, you'll find, uh, you'll find, you know what it does tell us? It says you're going to know the things that matter. I know I watched that Jeopardy show, I shared about that, and there's a lot of knowledge that those people have, and it's just meaningless to me. Right. I mean, you might have studied a book, and you studied all kinds of stuff, and I tell you what, I know where I work. I've got 30 years in there where they, uh, my mind is full of part numbers. <laughs> it is, it, I, know, I, I know account numbers. I, I know customer account numbers. I know area codes pretty well after being on the phone. I can see it pop up and I say, well, that's Phoenix. Or it pops up, I can say, well, that's over, that's in New York. Uh, there's a lot of, and you know what? I like to erase all of that and put something in there that matters. Amen. There's apparently room, amen? But we find these things that matter. A saved person has an unction that comes from God, amen? The world, there's things they just can't understand. They don't understand us. They don't understand the things of God. But he said, we find we have an option that told us these things. This again is not a book knowledge. This is a spirit knowledge. Amen. You'll find, starting with this chapter, going to the end of the book, there's five chapters, there's four chapters, you'll find the word knowledge, or know, some 31 times. He talks about some things that we know. As I thought about that, I'd like to ask you, and sometimes you've been asked this, sometimes we greet one another, or you see somebody down at Walmart, or somebody say, what do you know? What do you know? And you know what? Uh, you don't really want to know what they know. <laughs> do you? Or sometimes someone says something to you, say, what do you know? Well, let me tell you. <laughs> and you say, boy, I'm sorry I asked. But I'm going to tell you what, uh, you know, uh, I, I do want you to know these important truths. I want you to be the us. I want you to be part of the family of God. And in order to do that, there are some things I hope you know this morning. And I'm going to share uh, some of those things. Now, by the way, how this works, you say, well, how this unction thing work? Amen. I, now, it would be nice if the Holy Spirit just swooped down. Amen. And just all of a sudden, whoa, do I know it all? <laughs> no. You know what the Holy Spirit will get you to do? It'll tell you, you need to, it, He's going to use the Word of God. That's right, amen. I think it was last week I preached on how, how it affects us, the Word of God, doesn't it? And it's a sharper than a two-edged sword. And you get the Word of God with the Spirit of God, and you'll get the right knowledge. And so uh, uh, you say, well, I need some more of that knowledge. You know what you say? Well, let's get more in the Word of God. You get more in the Word of God, you'll get more of the knowledge of God. Amen. You want the mind of Christ, you've got to get in the Word of God. And so we find it's just not something, I'm waiting for it, come on, give it to me. It's going to be an effort on our part. But praise God, I can tell you there are some things this morning uh, that I know. And I want to just share them. The first one, if you look over in chapter 3, verse 14, it says, we know. There's one of those knows there. Again, there's 30 of them in here. We know. Says that we have passed from death. Now I want you to I want to stop right there. First of all, you know what I know? There was a time in my life I, I was as good as dead. I was dead in Christ. I was dead in my sins. And I believe that's the first option that, that where God I revealed to me, revealed you. You know what, this morning, I want you to know if you're here without Jesus Christ, you're as good as dead. Right. The Bible said the wages of sin is what? Death. death. The Bible said we've all sinned. And the penalty, the wage for that sin is death. And I tell you, that's the first step. It's so hard to get the world to understand it. I, you can't, I, I want them to open their eyes 
And it's the Holy Spirit that's got to do that. The Bible said, no man come unto me except the Father draw him. And when he draws him, when they've heard the word of God, that said that, you know what? Without Christ, you're dead. And I'm glad to tell you what, I, at one time in my life, I have, that was revealed to me through God, He told me, you're in trouble. Much of the world don't think they're in trouble, do they? No. You go talk to the neighbors, oh, I'm all right. You go talk to such and such, they don't have a concern, they're not concerned. And you know what, they have, they're caught their trust in something else. They'll think I'm pretty good. But you'll find here, I'm glad to tell you what I can tell you. There was a time I knew I was good as dead. Amen? I knew that. I knew I was in trouble. And praise God. We need uh, folks to have that knowledge. You're here and you've never been saved. You know what? Uh, you're as good as dead. So I don't like hearing that, Brother Brad, but it's the truth that you don't even know it. The devil has got a hold of you. And he is looking, waiting for you to take that last breath. And he is going to claim you. But you know what? I'm glad I know a little more than that, though. I'm glad I knew that I was good as dead. I knew my going to church wasn't going to do it. I knew that my goodness wasn't good enough. And praise God, I knew I was in trouble. But the rest of that verse says, here's something else that I know. It says, we know that we have passed from death unto life. Amen. Anybody that passed from death unto life? Yeah. There the day, amen, I knew I was headed for that place called hell. I was head good as dead, amen. But praise God, there was a time in my life that you know what? I passed out of that death and I came to life. Anybody know that? Amen. Good grief, amen. We ought to, we ought to get excited about that. That's right. You think when old Lazarus was, when Jesus called him out of the grave, said Lazarus come forth, and boy, I tell you what, he's hopping out of there with that wrapping on him. Do you think when he got done there, it says, he said, well, yeah, I was dead and I'm alive. <laughs> he got excited about that. Yes, sir. Others got excited about that. We ought to be excited about it. Boy, I know you were dead. I know how you were, but I know what you are now. Amen. Praise the Lord. We find here, I'm glad I know. I want you to know uh, this morning, do you know, amen, that you were as good as dead at one time in your life? But praise God, do you know that you passed from life unto death? Now I want you to say, well, Brother Brad, how do I know? How do I know? Now, we've got to be very careful. And uh, I know, and I, I'm, I'm going to tell you this, and we've heard this before. I, I know I passed from life unto death, and I can say it because I was there. Okay? Yeah. Were you there when that took place? Yeah. Now praise God. And, and don't lose that. Don't, don't forget that. But I, I want you to be careful. There's been a lot of folks that have put trust in something and they said, well, I was there. And it wasn't the unction of God. Hmm. Help us, Lord. Yeah. You know, I'm fearful. You know, we have vacation Bible school, and I'm, I'm just that way over here. I'm, I'm just scared. You can get you can get every kid. You can get every kid at vacation Bible school to come to an altar. All right. I mean, they say, I'm going. Yeah. And you know what? You can say, well, they got saved. First of all, I don't know that. Correct. And every time I see him, well, I remember that you got saved. They said, I remember you got saved. You know what they do? And all of a sudden they say, I remember I got saved that day. You know what? Uh, that's not the evidence that you've been saved that you were there. Yeah. There's been folks been baptized. All they did was got wet. They said, well, I remember. How many times did I ask folks, you say, well, I got baptized. I was there. <laughs> that doesn't mean you're saved. I'll tell you, I'll show you what the Bible says. It'll tell you what the evidence is. It says right here in this, this book here. Look what it says in chapter 2. Verse 3 says, And hereby we do know him. It says if we keep the commandments. Boy, that don't sound right, does it? And he that saith, I know him, you know what they're saying, I'm saved, and keep it not his commandments, notice what it says, is a liar. And the truth is not in him. <clears throat> I 
I shared here recently, <coughs> I, you know, I didn't like it. I didn't, you know, maybe if I went back, I might have said something a little bit different. But someone asked, if we were picking up their kids, and they said, now I want to ask you, do you believe in tongues? Mm. I may have been coming for a number of years, you know, the kids. And I said, uh, well, I, think I didn't sure it was all in text, and it was all in text, you know, what I was doing. And uh, this person said, well, and if I would ask this person if they're saved, you know what they'd say? I, I was there. Because when I was a kid, I spoke in tongues. Hmm. Well, as kind as I could be, I, I shared, I said, that's not the evidence of being saved. The evidence is a changed life, my God. Mm. Yeah. Folks that say they're saved and has never been changed, there's something wrong. Oh, they might have been there, said a prayer. They might even went ahead and got baptized. But if their life is not changed, the Bible said you're a liar. I'm tired of folks going through life saying, I'm saved. I remember when I was a kid, I did this and that. And there's nothing in their life today since then that shows any evidence that they are. But they got their trust in something wrong. You know what I know this morning, amen? I was passed from life to from death to life. And you know why I know? There was a change that took place in my life. Amen. Yep. The Bible said, amen. if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. That's right. Old things are passed away. I'm not the same. I'm maybe not what I should be, but I'm not what I used to be. Amen. You know why? Because an unction. The truth came in me. Amen. Praise God. When God comes in you, there's going to be a change. That's right. You find it. You find John talks a lot about this. Actually, a changed life. You find here uh, in chapter two. It says you'll keep his commandments. You know what that tells me? You know, before I got saved, it wasn't no big deal. I wasn't too concerned. I was a little concerned. But you know, ever since I've been saved, you know what I, my well, you know what my desire is? It's to do what he wants. And you know what that means? I gotta look at the book. And by the way, if you don't have a love for that book, there's something wrong. There ain't no pretty lot of books out there, but there ain't nothing like that book. And that's the book that God directs us, amen. I tell you, you can take, I got all kinds of books at home. I got so many books that when I sit in my chair down there in the back basement, I got all those books around me. I feel so smart, amen. Uh, they're just intelligent books. They're, they're all kinds of great authors and all that. But you know what? You can throw them all away as far as I really care. Yeah. There's one book. Yeah. Yeah. And you know what it does? Tell me, Lord. It tells me. I want to know what God wants for me. You know what that tells me? I got some unction. I got that unction, amen. And praise God, I know. That's one thing I do know. There's a change, and He put a love for that book, amen, in me. And by the way, I like to hear preaching. Amen. I like to hear teaching. So many folks say, I'm saved, but that church stuff, that ain't for me. You know what it said there? Let me just kind of add on that. It's in chapter 3, verse 14. It tells us, we know we have passed from death into life. Notice what it says. Because we love the brethren. You know what? I'm just going to tell you, I love, I, I, I love brethren. Amen. I love the family of God. Yeah. And there's something wrong if you don't love the family of God. I've heard folks say this before. Well, well I'm saved. I, 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 when I was a kid, I had this. But, you know, church is really not my thing. I tell you, there's something wrong. Yeah. I'm just going, I'm not going to make no excuse for that. There's something wrong about that. You'll find, I know, I love the brethren. Sometimes, you know, I hope you love me. Sometimes you don't like me. Sometimes I don't like you. But I love you. I know it's hard to imagine, amen. Sometimes I say things you don't care for. Sometimes you do things they don't care for. But I still love you. And there ain't no one. You're my kind of people. Amen. Now, I, I spend most of my time at work. 
I spend most of my time with all those folks, but they're not my people. Right. But praise the Lord, you'll find if you've been passed from life to death, there's a change that took right. place in your life. Amen. And hope you can say, oh yeah, I did. Amen. Praise God. <laughs> well, praise God, something good to know. Well, I know I was good as dead. Amen. I can just tell you that I had that unction. The Spirit gave me that. Amen. He's a, you find that that unction, he says, you'll know all things. You won't find anything more important to realize the day in your life that you were as good as dead. Yeah. But praise God, I, I didn't stay in that state. And I know I passed from death to life. <laughs> Woo! Anybody know that? Amen. 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 It's good to know that, isn't Jesus. it? Look in chapter 2 or something else that I know. It tells here in verse 1, My little children, these things are right unto you that you sin not. Boy, I tell you what, I thought when you got saved you didn't sin. I tell you, wouldn't that be wonderful? It says, And if man, any man sin, it says we have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ, the righteous. Thank you, Lord. You know what I know? I have an advocate. Amen. Thank you. Anybody know that? Yeah. Maybe you understand that you've been passed from life to death, but if you don't understand, you also have an advocate. Amen. You're missing out. I'm going to tell you what. I know I have an advocate. Yeah, that's right. I shared this, uh, I think, one time back in 1989. We moved here. And we, I, we worked for a company there over in Paris, Kentucky. They have a large hometown. And uh, 300 people, they came in there one day and they said, Three, all of you are losing your job. We're shutting this place down. It's been in business for, you know, since the 1920s. It's been shut down. Well, we prayed about it. And it wasn't easy, but we prayed to God. God moved us to Indiana. Amen. And he's wonderful. Yeah. Amen. It's, been, it's been a wonderful journey. Mm. And uh, you find that uh, when I came over here, we didn't know what was going to take place. I didn't know anything about going on there. But there's somebody that, uh, he was our president. He was the president of our factory over there. And at one time, he was the president of Rotary Lift here in Madison. And he had moved up into Dover, up higher above the president status. And they needed someone to kind of take charge over there where we were. And he came and became a president. And he came here to Madison. Here, my 30-year-old boy. And he came and he called me. We got together at lunch. And he, he, he got me, he came with me, and he said, he talked to me. He said, how are they treating you? And he said, now, he said, if they don't do you right, he said, you call me. Hmm. Wow. Huh? I thought to myself, he, he did that to me. He didn't come and see nobody else at Madison, but he came that day to see me. And I thought, wow, who am I? Now, I've got good news. I never had to call him. That's right. Amen. God's been good. Amen. That's right. But I'm going to tell you what. I'll not be ashamed one day when this old body gives out. And I tell you what. And even now, right when I sin, I'll beat it myself. I'll say, sorry, Lord. Amen. I don't want to do that again. But I do know on the right hand of God, there's yeah. an advocate. And he's on my side. Amen. Praise the Lord. Yeah. And when this old body gives out and I stand before God and they might say, why should I let you into this kingdom? I ain't going to say it because I've been good. I've got an advocate with Jesus. Amen. Amen. I say he's part of mine. Yeah. yeah. Thank you, Lord. He say you can get in trouble, you just call me. Yeah. That's right. Well, I know that this morning. I know I've got an advocate. He's on my side. He's on your side. Yeah. Praise God. Isn't it good to know that? Amen. Boy, if we didn't have that, I'd be a little worse up. Amen. Hallelujah. How wonderful it is to have that. You'll find, uh, boy, how wonderful it is. I know I have been passed from death to life. Anybody know that this morning? Yeah. I know I also have an advocate. You're going to find also, amen, I'm, I also know I've got access to him. Look in chapter 4, verse 6, to 1 John.
We are of God. He that knoweth God heareth us. He that is not of God heareth not us. Hereby know we the spirit of truth and the spirit of error. In chapter 1, you find that John, as he's writing this, you know, he made some statements. He said, we have heard him. He says, we have seen him. He says, we have even felt him. Yes. As I think about John was around the table there, and there was one that was holding his breath, Jesus' breast, and just mm -hmm. hanging on to him. That was John. And you know what he said? That same fellowship that I, we have, you can have also. Yeah. Woo, amen. You know what he's saying? You can have access to him. Yeah. It's not like saying, oh, well, I know President Trump. Anybody know President Trump? Well, you say, well, maybe some of you here, you know, pretty high stats. Maybe you actually met him. I don't know. Maybe you shook hands and you said, hey, my name is such and such. You know, I'd like to see you try getting access to him. Hmm. A lot of folks say they know somebody. You ain't going to get access very fast, are you? But you know what I know this morning? I know he hears my prayers. I know I've got access to him. I know he's here for me. Isn't that something wonderful to know? How often he goes through life? I don't know. I sure need some help. I've got some good news for you, amen. I know whom I believe in and persuaded that he's able. Yeah. I'm going to tell you what this morning, praise God, I have, no, I have access to him. Yeah. Man. Boy, ain't that a wonderful thing? Yeah, man. Boy, I'm glad he hears this. Don't know why. Don't understand it all. But I do know he does. <clears throat> well, we got some great knowledge. These are great things to know, aren't they? I know I was good as dead. I know I passed from death unto life. Amen. I know I have an advocate and I know I've got access. It says, come boldly to the throne of God. Amen. Praise God, that veil, when Jesus died on the cross, the veil was split from the top down, and now there's access uh, to, to, to our Lord. Amen. Amen. Yeah. Praise Him. Praise Him. We have a lot of things in here. I just get excited about some things that I know. I hope you know these things. If you don't know these things, He wants you to know them. That's right. You find in chapter 2, verse 18, it said, Little children... It is the last time. And as ye have heard, the Antichrist shall come. Even now are there many Antichrists. Whereby we know that it is the last time. You know what I know? I'm about ready to see Jesus. Amen. Isn't that exciting? Yes. As a child of God, I like that knowledge. Amen. I'm about ready to see Jesus. Amen. It's hard for me to understand how anyone can not see this whole world without coming to a conclusion. I know that. I got that unction. Amen. And I have that knowledge. And you, you can look at the news. You can look here. You can look there. Amen. Praise God. And in chapter 3, verse 2, it says, Praise God. Uh, when He comes, He is coming. It says, I know I'm going to be like Him. That's right. Oh, to be like Jesus. Mm. Oh, to be like Him. Oh, to get rid of this sinful body. Oh, amen, to have this, to get a body that ain't have the aches and pains and from one day to another, I tell you what, praise God, we're going to get something new. You know what? I know that. Amen. And you know what that does? That motivates me. Does that motivate anybody? Did you know that this present suffering here isn't compared to the glory which shall be revealed? Yeah. Woo, do you know that? And so when you get down into the little pity party and say, oh me, I tell you what, I think things ain't going good. Every time I turn around, i got to take this pill just to get be able to move, amen. Or sometimes i got to get this or that. You know what? Praise God. One day, He, Jesus, is coming. Amen. amen. And I'm going to be like him. Yes, sir. Yes. Woo, praise the Lord. I think some of you maybe forgot about that. That ought to keep a smile on our face. Did you know Jesus is coming back? Amen. And you know what? He's coming for me. Amen. He's coming for us. Yeah. Are you the us here this morning? Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. You know I said all that. You know what? 
there's a better day is coming. Mm. Amen. Yes, sir. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Now I'll get down to reality here. The reality is, Roger here for a while, we're going to have some rough days. True. Ain't that right? Some of you are going through rough days. But better days are coming. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. Don't lose sight of that. Thank you. This life's about glorifying Him, but you know what this life ain't about here, it's about there. Amen. Hallelujah. Lastly, again, I'm going to say in turn to chapter 4, verse 13. Hereby know we that we dwell in Him, and He in us, because He hath given us His Spirit. And we have seen and do testify that the Father sent the Son to be the Savior of the world. Whosoever shall confess that Jesus, the Son of God, God dwelleth in him, and he in God. You know what I know? I have an unction. Amen. I have Jesus. Anybody got Jesus? Amen. I hope you can know that. I hope you have that. I hope you can say without a shadow of a doubt. Amen. Praise God. Paul said, do you not know that your body, he's not talking about everybody, he's talking about those that trusted in Jesus, amen. Know ye not that your body is the temple of God and that he dwelleth in you? Do you know that he dwells in you? Anybody know that? Yeah. I think a lot of folks, I, I tell you, there's a lot of folks, they just, again, as I said, they put their trust in something else and they don't know where he's at. Boy, I know I can sing that song. He lives, he lives, he lives. How do I know he lives? Because he lives within my heart. That's right. Now, I can't explain that to someone who's lost. I can't explain that, amen. You know, the Bible said the Spirit beareth witness with my spirit that I am a child of God. There's no ifs, ands, or buts about it, amen. Praise God. I'm glad to tell you what. I've got that unction. Do you yeah. have that unction? If I said to you, uh, what do you know? Do you know you have him? Yeah. Praise the Lord. Hmm. You go to the last chapter of this book here. Chapter 5. Verse 13. I like, I like quoting this to folks. A lot of folks don't think they can know. It says, These things I've written unto you that believe on the name of the Son of God. It says that you, well, you hope or wish someday, you know, that you might know that you have eternal life and that you may believe on the name of the Son of God. Amen. Verse, verse 19 says, And we know that we are God and the whole world lieth in wickedness. And we know that the Son of God is come and hath given us an understanding that we may know Him that is true and we are in Him that is true. Even in His Son, Jesus Christ, this is the true God and eternal life. Yes. It starts by knowing one day you were dead. Hell don't scare nobody anymore. Because they don't think they're dead. They think they're going to be all right. <coughs> you know, uh, much of the world thinks it's a balance act. Well, I've got some good over here, and I got, yeah, I have some bad. And they think one day they'll stand before God, and God's going to steal that balance. I'm going to tell you what I know in my life the bad would outweigh the good. Right. Yeah. I'd be in trouble. But praise God, there was a day, that, and that's why Jesus came that's right. to take care of that. Amen. Amen. Jesus. And I passed from life, from death to life. Do you know that? Mm -hmm. And through this, through this journey, until the end, I've kept, and I have an advocate too. Yes. You can say, I don't have much advocate no more. Forget that. Praise the Lord. I know he's coming back. I know it won't be long. I know I have Jesus. I'd ask you one more time, what do you know? What do you know this morning? Let's all stand. Father, help. The Bible said we have an unction.
that we might know all things. And Lord, these are things I know. A lot of things I don't know, but these things I do know. Lord, I, I know I was in trouble one day. I was in need of a Savior. And Lord, it wasn't that prayer. Lord, there was a spirit. Lord, God came into my life. We were born again. And Lord, I was not, a, I became a new creature. I was not the same. It was just not another day the next day. And Lord, you've still been working on me. But Lord, there's a change that continually change. And my desire, and it still is today, is to be more like Jesus. I want to know your will. I want to know what you want. Lord, I know I have that. That's how I know I've got that unction. Father, it won't be long and Jesus will come back. Lord, I want folks to be ready. I don't want them to say to themselves, well, I think I'll be all right. I want them to say, I know. I have a God that has a blessed assurance. Jesus is mine. Lord, speak to our hearts. Have your way. Encourage us, Lord, in Jesus' precious name. Amen. With every head bowed and every eye closed this morning. What do you know? What do you know? Don't listen to a lie. That old devil started telling the lie in the garden. He said, oh, you'll be all right. You'll not die. And he's been spreading that, spreading that lie ever since. Boy, if I had you raise your hand, said, do you, do you know that you're saved? 100%, do you know that you're saved? Would you be able to raise your hand? I mean, if you're just 99, I want you to take care of that. There's no reason to have any doubt. There's an advocate. We need an advocate. Satan will tell you everything's all right, but if you listen to Jesus, Jesus.